Okay. Well, then, okay. Uh, would you like to get started? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Okay. First, let me begin first of all by just introducing you to the people okay. who are Thank with me. Thank you very me. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, You're right. Who who are with me on this call? I mean, you really we really have put together here for this conversation. Um, you know, the the top leadership um, of the NED. Um, we you know we have with us Barbara Haig. Um, who has been at the NED for more than three decades um, and is the uh, deputy to the president for policy and strategy uh, and follows Belarus and has followed Belarus very closely for a very, very long time. Um, we're also joined by Bo uh, Brian Joseph, who is our vice president for a program at NED and oversees all of NED's programs literally in 100 countries. Um, and uh, Asia Ivancheva, who is um, our senior director for um, mm -hmm. for Europe, and uh, finally Nina uh, Ognianova, who uh, is the senior program officer who oversees all of our uh, work in Belarus. So you have everyone here, who um, you know who who oversees our programs, and just a brief word about the NED and uh, and its work. The NED, you know, is not a programmatic organization. We we're grant making, and we have four institutes, and I think um, all of them are active in Belarus. Two of them, I think, you know well, because they work very, very closely with you and your team and uh, the Coordination Council, and that's NDI and uh, IRI, uh, our two party institutes. And uh, they're under the NET umbrella, and we fund um, their work, uh, you know, that uh, works on uh, strengthening parties and their uh, messaging, their public outreach, their communications. And I know that they're working with you and your team um, very, very closely. And we also have um, a business institute that's associated with our Chamber of Commerce in the United States, the Center for International Private Enterprise, uh, mm -hmm. that we have funded to, uh, to work with the uh, private sector uh, in Belarus to set a vision and a uh, a framework for a post-Lukashenko uh, private uh, economic recovery uh, of the country. And we have a labor yeah. institute, a trade, a trade union yeah, institute. We, I, I think that we should. Yeah. And, and any event, in addition to these four institutes and our labor institute, which supports the independent unions in uh, Belarus, we also make grants directly to uh, organizations in Belarus and have done so for a very, very long time. And the critical area here, first of all, is free media. We support uh, the journalists. We're aware uh, of the raid on the uh, offices, uh, you know, several days ago of the Belarus Association. We support people if they have to flee the country. Uh, we support their uh, uh, te their temporary stay in other countries uh, and and all the needs that they have. We have been working around the country um, in the uh, eastern. Um, part of the country in Vitebsk mm -hmm. and Gobel and other country, other parts of, uh, mm -hmm. of the East on civic uh, participation. And we've made grants to groups. Uh, we also um, have uh, worked in the, uh, in, in the Western, uh, in the Western part of the country mm -hmm. on uh, pre, uh, pre media uh, in Grodno uh, and in uh, where we've supported citizen journalism. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, finally, we for a long time, we've also supported uh, Belarus language, history, art, and culture organizations that promote a strong national identity for Belarus. And we realize that uh, the revolution uh, that has taken place in Belarus is really liberation of the Belarus nation. Um, and uh, we've supported a group like MOVA uh, Nanova, uh, which has worked on language and, uh, mm -hmm. and cultural history and identity. Uh, thank you, Carl, and uh, very nice to virtually meet you, uh, Ms. Tikhanovskaya, and uh, that we have been working with partners, particularly in the east part of the country, um, as Carl said, in Vitebsk, in Gomel, in Mogilev, uh, for pretty much more than two, deca two decades, and we are supporting NGO hubs in all of these cities that further work and enable the the local um, initiatives and the smaller programs uh, in civil society to have a 
a platform for their own initiatives to engage with uh, local citizens. And we believe, and we have seen this, that a lot of the, the people who have been trained by these hubs, who have been um, in touch with, with them and being educated, being involved in their work, have now um, taken the the flag and uh, started to lead in um, in community organizing, in um, getting people uh, involved, excited about uh, public participation. Uh, and as Carl mentioned, we uh, believe that this long term uh, trust building that that we've had with the partners in Belarus has indeed um, brought the events uh, or build up to the events of, uh, of last summer. Um, we, we don't think that, and you can correct us if we are wrong, but we don't think that this movement that is so impressive and so inspiring now um, came out of nowhere, uh, that it just um, happened overnight, but it has been developing. And, and we have our modest but but significant contribution in that by empowering the local actors to do the important work. So, um, and we have obviously received a lot of uh, proposals from uh, foundations and groups in uh, Belarus. And we want to hear from you, you know, so we can understand what you think are, you know, where your, what your strategy is and what you're really, uh, and how we can, uh, how we can be helpful. Now we see that um, we can use uh, only right strate strategy uh, to unite with the um, people who is fighting for freedom in Russia now. And only together we can press on the, uh, on the EU mechanisms and uh, on the international society, only together with them. We, we, we think that's obviously incredibly important and we've emphasized this, you know, going back to the election in August when the demonstrations were taking place in the Russian Far East um, and, uh, and people were connecting with each other and saying that we share the same ideals. Uh, and so we're very, very committed to helping on that, uh, on that front and we will, working with our networks and our institutes. As I know, that is prohibited in uh, Russia now. Well, that doesn't matter. That doesn't no, matter. No. Uh, you know, we don't have we don't have offices. We're not like uh, Freedom House or NDI and IRI. We don't have offices, so if we're not there, they can't kick us out. Um, but we support many many groups, and we're uh, we have a very very active program throughout the country. Uh, so, um, uh, and you know, many of the groups obviously have their partners uh, in exile. So we're very active, and we can be very helpful uh, on this issue. But Leonid has reached you before, right? Yeah. I mean, Leonid Volker. So yes, you are absolutely. in touch with him too. Yes, of course. You know, we're aware. Uh, we're following following closely their own strategy. You know, they're looking now toward the um, the Duma elections in September, uh, and they have a long term strategy, um, and that too is an important area um, of uh, dialogue between your movement and the Russian movement as to, um, you know, how to carry the struggle forward, um, you know, with a combination of uh, both the protests that they've been having, but also now preparing for uh, the uh, Duma elections and local elections as well. I've tried to describe, you know, the fact that the NED is, you know, you can see the NED as an institution that helps yep. bring people together, that coordinates, and we can certainly help in making connections between groups in Belarus and Russia and elsewhere, uh, because we're widely uh, widely connected, and this is something that we do. But obviously, we're also uh, a grant making organization, a funding organization, and we have to know where the critical needs are. I see only one way to make a pressure in the EU now, because if right. we will unite with with the Russian opposition, we can uh, make a big pressure on two regimes. Right, right, right. Um, and uh, obviously, I think, you know, with the um, with the new administration here in Washington, uh, there's a great readiness to help, a great readiness to help. I think we have really wonderful people in this new administration. Well, of course, that's very, very exciting. Um, but, you know, we're also aware of the extremely difficult challenges that lie ahead in Russia. They're obviously focusing on, um, you know, the uh, Duma elections in September and then the 
you know, very critical 2024 elections. And, you know, you've uh, seen the strategy that they have put forward. They're pulling back now on the protests and they're focusing with their smart vote uh, campaign on the election. So we're following that very, very closely. Um, and they too, uh, you know, um, have an extremely difficult, uh, extremely difficult struggle on their hands. I was, uh, you know, I was made aware recently that uh, there are going to be military exercises, you know, that Russia is having over the summer with Belarus, and we're we're actually concerned. We don't we don't know what uh, Putin's strategy is going to be. Nobody really knows, but we're concerned that uh, there may be uh, Russian troops even in Belarus. So this is a great concern to us, and these are the immediate problems that we face. Uh, obviously, we have great hopes, uh, you know, that maybe sometime in the future we can think about someone like Yulia being um, president, but we're a long, long way away from that. And we've got to deal with immediate problems right now. We can support obviously making linkages with uh, not only with Russians, but also with people um, in um, in Central Europe and West in, in Europe itself and in uh, in the United States. Let's give the word so to Barbara. Right. Um, you know, uh, let me invite, um, if, uh, if they want, um, other members of our team who are with us, Barbara or uh, Nina. Yes, uh, thanks. And it's such a pleasure to be talking with you. Um, but there's so many things to go over. Just to comment on a couple of questions that, that you raised. Uh, First is on the labor front, um, so that you know, we've had our, our labor group intermittently uh, involved in, in Belarus since probably the mid to late 1990s. And they are doing programs out of Ukraine right now, trying to support, but we will keep pushing with them. Plus, we have provided direct funding uh, to some labor related uh, activities in Belarus over the years. So we will keep working on that. It, we understand how critically important that is. Um, uh, on, on Russia, um, most importantly, so, so we have a very ample program uh, in Russia, and it's, as Carl mentioned, goes even to the grass in provinces, uh, in oblasts, outside of Moscow. It's very deep and it's very broad. There, uh, the, the Navalny focus, as you know, has been on there. He has a two front thing. One is a political strategy, which is, you know, been organizing people to run and building coalitions with anybody running against uh, the, the party in power. The second thing, though, is his theme of corruption. So uh, one of my questions is um, because a lot of the the groups that do research into this um, in addition to, to Navalny's group but there are uh, there are different media outlets and investigative reporters that we have uh, really a grant relationship and a direct relationship with and I'm wondering, if you are envisioning any of the similar sorts of tracking of government officials and their resources and or, and this is where I think Carl raised the issue of Russian force presence, um, looking at the deployment of, of Russian military uh, in the country and how that might be changing over time and whether we should be raising this with some of our some of our contacts that do this work with the Wagner group and others uh, you know tracking what these Russian both official forces and unofficial forces um, are doing um, and whether that's that's an area uh, that you all are looking at or would like to look at but also just in general, um, the Russia groups are, are highly, um, let's say, very much aware of, of the authorities' efforts 
to infiltrate, monitor, and so on. And so security is a huge issue. And when we start linking groups from, from one very sensitive situation to another, um, security becomes much more complicated and is a really serious issue. I just would like to mention that it's very difficult, for example, to, to work in such a condition. But thank you very much for your support. You know that, that Belarus is a very corrupted country. We are, we are having some negotiations now with the trade unions, trade union leaders, and they promised to, to give us some, some people from their factories, but they, they do need some money. They don't want to, to, to protest with no money. We, for now, for nowadays, we've got lots of factories. I'm, I'm so sorry. And there are lots of there are lots of working class people, people whom whom Lukashenko is afraid of. I'm sorry. Take your time, Svetlana. Take your time. We understand this is an extraordinarily difficult uh, situation that you're facing, and we. I don't know. So we need some money, and, and 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 how would we? How could we arrange it? Well, you know, I think you, you're already, uh, you know, you're in touch with uh, with us, with um, with other institutions, with the European Endowment, with with our government, um, and I know our government wants to be as helpful as possible. I um, and our ambassador um, is someone who uh, is very committed to your cause, Ambassador Fisher. Are you going in, to in, support Russian op opposition or no? Well, you know, look, the Russian opposition is uh, is very well, um, you know, they've got their own very clear strategy, um, and you probably know about it, the smart vote strategy, and um, they, uh, you know, they've been very successful in uh, in raising funds from within Russia. We support groups all around the country who are part of this broad movement, um, and uh, we're obviously uh, responsive to uh, uh, to all the groups on the ground that need help. And we have a very active program in Russia, which is really across the country. Um, and so uh, we will, uh, you know, as needs develop, as they go forward with this strategy, we will try to be helpful in whatever way we can. We have to basically take our guidance from uh, someone like Leonid Volkov, uh, you know, who uh, is the leader of that movement and, you know, they. Uh, so we want to be responsive in whatever way we can. Uh, and uh, Barbara was raising, you know, the investigative journalists in Russia uh, that can expose uh, the corruption, that can expose uh, all of the ways in which uh, they operate to try to subvert, uh, you know, not only groups in Russia, but, you know, groups like your own. We have to, we have to follow these things very, very carefully and be sh sharing information with each other on these things. So we are very, very active, but um, we have to take our guidance from uh, our friends in Russia as to what they need. Mr. M Mr. President, also I would m I would like to mention that the the Minister of Foreign Affairs for Sweden told me that my my look is very poor, was very poor, that my my clothes are very poor, and my shoes also, and, and so I need some money even for 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 good look. I need some money for for Gucci brand because I, I they they say that it's very trendy in the United States or like 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 Louis Vuitton and uh, you know that I I'm looking like a like 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 a shit. I'm sorry and uh, I need some money and I I I I will I'm having I'm having some 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 meetings with with Mr. Blinken. I can't go with that poor poor look. I'm so sorry. Yes, I. I know. Nina, do you want to you want to raise any questions, Nina? I mean, I think that um, I think that we, we we probably need to take this into another call. Um, I I don't I don't think that uh, you know the net can really provide resources for clothing. Um, I think that uh, absolutely, as Carl said. We have certain procedures in place, and we will help you. Это уже враньё полное. Ну им это надо, видимо, для революции. Они хотели Беларусь делить, кромсать. Они ещё пусть спасибо скажут, что ему головы не подворачивал всем. 
если бы я открыл стрельбу, то после десяти выстрелов там бы никого не осталось. Hello, do you hear me? This is Mayor KGB of Belarus. Uh, so, as you know, we have listened yeah. everything that you have said. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before Gosh, we ask you this up? any question. You have the right to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If Just you can you afford the a call? lawyer, yeah, yeah, we'll, one will we'll, be we'll appointed for you before. Now. I'm sorry before any questioning, if you wish.